I'm going to be making a tri-chocolate mousse. Three kinds of chocolate. White chocolate, dark chocolate, and milk chocolate all in the same dish. Well, we have to start off with some heavy cream. I have three quarters of a cup of heavy cream, and I'm going to put this in a saucepan. And I'm going to put it on my burner, and I'm going to heat it up. We do not want this to boil. I just want it warmed up and so that it has little bubbles. So while that's doing that in a large bowl, I'm going to take four egg yolks, get those all in there, and three tablespoons of sugar, and one teaspoon of real vanilla. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to whisk this up so it's well blended. I want to make sure there's no lumps in that sugar. Okay. And now all I have to do is wait until that cream gets warm. You can see the cream just has a little bit of steam coming off of it. So that's the time I want to remove it. And now we're going to temper the eggs by adding a little bit of this cream mixture to the egg yolks. We don't want to add it all at once because that would be scrambled eggs. So in the beginning, we want to be really, really careful. Very, very little. And keep that whisk moving. Blending it well. Now I can get a little bit more daring and add more. Okay, that's about blended. Now, I'm gonna put this back into the pan. And we're going to cook it on our heat till it reaches approximately 160 degrees. If you don't have a candy thermometer, it would be a good idea to get one if you're gonna be doing an awful lot of baking or candy making. So I have a rather large one here. Put it on. And the thermometer should not touch the bottom of the pan because that will give you a false reading. It will read warmer than it is. So right now, I'm at 128 and climbing. And you want to have another bowl ready with a fine sieve, because you're going to sieve it just in case there's any little scrambled eggs that happened while you were cooking it. This is going very, very fast. Okay, that's it. So now we're going to pour this in our sieve, get it all in there, we did pretty well, no scrambled eggs, so now we need to put this off to the side and let this cool, and I'll come back in a minute and I'll show you what we're going to do with the chocolate. Now we're going to work on the chocolate for our mousse. We have those three chocolates I spoke about, white chocolate, milk chocolate, and dark chocolate. We need two and a half ounces of each type of chocolate. I've already measured out the milk chocolate and the white chocolate. Now I'm going to measure out the uh, dark chocolate. I'm going to use a kitchen scale to measure out two and a half ounces. If you don't have a kitchen scale, you can just sort of guess by taking a bag of chocolate bits, which is 12 ounces, and just kind of saying, well, this looks like a little more than a sixth of the bag. So on my scale, I'm gonna put a bowl, and the bowl has weight, so I'm now reading five and seven eighths ounces. So there's a little trick in here. You press a button, and it calls, it's called tearing the scale, which takes away the weight of what's on it. So now it does not recognize the weight of the bowl. It will just recognize what I put into the bowl. So I'm going to measure out two and a half ounces. That's about right. And I have going here, 
I'm doing it all in metal bowls because I'm going to do them over a water bath, which is, uh, this is approximately one quarter with water and it's steaming, not boiling. And it's going to slowly melt my chocolate so it just becomes a very nice smooth chocolate. So I will do that with all three of those chocolates. And when they're all melted, then I'll show you how we're going to start adding that custard mixture that we already made. All three chocolates are now melted. So what I want to do is into each different chocolate, I want to pour about one third of this custard mixture. And I'm just going to eyeball it. Okay. Now just mix them up thoroughly. And what we're going to do is when I finish mixing these all up, we are then going to put these aside until they cool completely. So we can't move any further until then. And then we'll be adding the cream and then making the dishes up and it's going to be really, really pretty. And then lastly, the dark chocolate. smells wonderful. I love the smell of chocolate. I like to eat chocolate too, but I really love the smell of it. Especially the darker chocolate has much more aroma, I think, than any of the other chocolates. And that's it. Now we just have to wait until these cool to room temperature and then we can proceed. The three chocolates are now cooled down, so I'm going to proceed with the recipe. And I have here one and three, well, one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. And I'm gonna put it into my mixer. No one said this was a diet dessert. This is the holidays, we're not counting calories. And we're going to whip these until we get peaks. Not necessarily stiff peaks, but soft peaks. All right, that's pretty good. Soft peaks, not stiff peaks. Now, what we're going to do is take about one third of this and put it into each of the different chocolates. One for the white, one for the dark, one for the milk. got the least amount. Kind of missed over there. Uh, there we go. Now folding it in. We don't want to whip it in, we want to fold it in. So this takes probably the longest. You could easily double this recipe if you wanted to. Um, Depends on how many people you have coming over. Okay, now to the dark. It's just cutting in and you're turning the bowl the whole time. Okay, that's about it for that one. And now the white. The white chocolate almost looks like lemon. You can make um, this dessert and like I'm doing now. We're going to put it into our dishes and then you're going to refrigerate it for at least two hours, but you could make this up to one day ahead. So if you're having guests on Christmas day, for instance, or whatever, you can make it the day before. Okay, that's out of the way. Let's get our pretty dishes. I have some very pretty uh, individual trifle dishes. 
if you don't have you don't have to get these you could do this in a wine glass or just a pretty any kind of glass that you must have so clean off Trying to figure out how I'm going to lay this. I think I'm going to put the dark on the bottom and then the white in the middle and then the milk on top. Okay. have enough here for five but I don't have a fifth dish out so I guess I'll just have to eat all the leftovers in the dish I'm sure I'll have some help now the white and don't try to push it in there you want it to stay on its own as its own stripe so you don't want it to mix in with the other one But not least, our milk. I'll have to wipe that side of that dish because I made a little bit of a mess over there. Now, these look pretty just the way they are, and I'm going to put them in the refrigerator to set. But before I do serve them, I want to garnish them. And I'm going to garnish them now because I don't have time to wait. Or you don't have time to wait for me. Put a little bit of grated chocolate on the top. This is a dark chocolate. Just a little. And what I also did is I made some candied cranberries. Uh, I didn't do it on the program. The recipe will be with this recipe on the website. Uh, it's just made a sugar water. You put the cranberries into the sugar water, put it into a refrigerated uh, container with a tight lid, leave it overnight in the morning, drain them and roll them in sugar. These are best eaten the same day that they are made. I have some candied orange peel and lemon peel. And these, are done a little bit differently. This recipe will also be on the website. These you can keep in a Ziploc bag for a couple of weeks and they'll stay good. So into the refrigerator they go and we'll garnish them later. 